to the Lord. To all the ministers and all the congregations, we say glory to God. Um, I stand I stand before you to say farewell to my dear and beloved pastor that he be able to keep things together until we meet again, which I know we will. Yeah. 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 <sighs> I'm gonna miss him. He was like a brother unto me, you know. When he came down to gas, my friend and I, we sat there, we kind of, we kind of sat on a corner and kind of watched him, you know, he had all, all his dashi and all this kind of stuff. We kind of watched him, we said, hmm, who is this? <laughs> But he was Brother John. Um, can I bear with me a few minutes? I just be a few minutes. I won't. I won't take that long. But I get all. I get all choked up sometimes when I think about him. Uh, what he was, the kind of person that he was. A person who cared about everybody. I didn't see nobody that he didn't try to help. Sometimes, sometimes we would be down at the church way after service, and I know Sister Lisa would be wondering what in the world is Pastor John there. And we'd be there at five, six, and sometimes seven o'clock at night. That's the type of person where he gave his all to everybody else, you know, and. I just want to thank the Lord that he was a part of my life. He's the one, you know, once upon a time, there would never been a way I would get up and stood up in front of people and say it, not a word. I wanted to hide out. But Pastor John said, what's wrong with you, sister? <laughs> he said, you got the Holy Spirit. And you can get up in front of anybody and say exactly what the Spirit of the Lord is putting your heart to say. He did so many things that's, that, that, that is not in the record of what he done because he was a caring type of person. We, I'm going to miss him terribly. I'm going to miss a brother. He was more than just a pastor. He was a mentor to me. And he the one who helped me to grow, to listen to our problems. Although he may have something going on with him himself at home or other places, he never let, let it be known about how he was suffering and things of so his nation. So I just want to say, we love you, we appreciate you, and most of all, our spirit uh, uh, through him with Sister Lisa. We really, we really praise him for uh, the Lord leading him in her life too and, and for the work that she doing on his behalf. So I just want to thank the Lord for all that Brother John had done and all that he had, will do in our hearts, which we can never, never, never say goodbye to. We will see you again, Brother John, very soon. And I just want to thank you. And Sister Lisa, we all love you very much. Thank you. Everybody on the list over there. Come on, come on. Yeah, come on. Anyone else who was on the list who did not speak, if you make your way over here, from you just come on, come on.
care for everyone. I haven't met anyone before Mr. Williams said. He wasn't part of my family, but he cared as if he was part of mine, and I'm pretty sure everyone can relate to that. He helped the youth so much. He pushed them. He remembered every one of us. He had a vision for every one of us. I am honored to have been able to meet him and to have been inspired by him. I also consider him a mentor, and I'm sure everyone young considered him a mentor. In Delray, being the community that it is, the poverty that it was, and it still is, you really don't have much hopes or much dreams or aspirations like that. And Mr. Williams, when I met him, he always told me, like, push yourself, you know you can do this. If there's a will, there's a way. And I am proof of that. Just like many of the other young people in Delray, I know there's many people that either are going into the medicine, medical field, or teaching, or going into engineering like I am. Um, just, they're pushing themselves. And I can say that it was because Mr. Williams pushed them. He believed in them. He was always there for them. He knew to be there for them when they were down, when they were up. Just knowing Mr. Williams was a blessing. And I can say I'm very, very, very thankful for Mr. Williams for everything he did for the community. Everyone still remembers him. From people that are like me now that are 21 to the little six and seven year olds that were starting the program back then and still remember him and now are teenagers. In Delray, Mr. Williams will always be remembered. And we're just very blessed to have had, us, had him in our lives. Thank you. Any of the names that we missed on here, any of the names that were printed that we missed on here. If your name is on here, only if your name is on here. If your name is on here, won't you come down, young lady? My sister named William, Brother Franklin. And as she's coming, uh, what all you all can't see, but all the young folk who came in, if you can please stand. All the young folk who came in, can you please stand? If you're under 18, stand. How about that? If you're under 18, please stand. All the young folk. So thank you for being here. And we know you did because Brother John uh, touched her life. He said, young folks, you stand. You stand. You know, you stand. You stand. Ms. Evans, I just want to speak on behalf of the young people here, and I remind you that there's a quote I live by, that you can cut an apple in half and count the seeds in that apple. You can never cut a seed in half and count the apples from that one seed. And though Brother John is over here on the faithful earth with us, you are responsible and you are charged to carry on his legacy for those purposes he never met. As you move your life and go forward, remember the words he gave you at the time he spent with you. You pay it forward and bless someone else. We're glad you're here. One more hand for all of our young people who are here. Ms. Johnson.
sorry. Pastor John, he have been there for me, and my, my grandmother, my mom, and my siblings. When I first went to Cass Baptist Church was when I was like their age. Their age, they're like 13, 12. He baptized me at the age of 12 or 13, one of those ages. I traveled a lot and every state I went to because I volunteered for 10 months and I just got back from November 10th. We're doing the service. Community service, helping the people that houses just been flooded. Yeah. The people that don't have anything. I gave back to them. I was in their houses, loved and good. And just seeing that the house on the face, when they go in the house, and they see that, you know, how hard we work just into the house and face it. It was a rough 10 months we got from Pastor John because it wasn't him all the way. He was just stressed out, depressed, traveling. It's tough and helping people is harder. You gotta think about, don't think about just yourself, you have to think about other people. But Pastor John, he taught me a lot, and I appreciate it. Oh, I never forget. And after this, I hope that I can continue to go to church. And even though I know it will not be the same, having him preach or is calling him. Last year around this time, it was a few days before Christmas. took me to the hospital and was asked to get staples in my thumb. And then his wife took me. And I was like at the year and say, remember I'm saying this like you doing a good job, you know? And that's the Lisa. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I wanna say thank you to Cass Baptist Church for keeping us, you know, making sure we get there to church every Sunday, even when it was tough, and making sure every Christmas was successful for my sisters and brothers, and for keeping my grandma off the street. And I really appreciate it very much. Thank you. Digging, 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 and a 
whole lot of things went through my mind, but nothing said. And I said, okay, well maybe I don't need to say so much. And I thought about it. And I thought about our relationship. Thought about our time together. Thought about our friends together. Thought about us working together. Thought about the years that passed. I thought about a lot of things. And I had to think about the Lord, you know, and his purpose in everything. Because you see, this life we live isn't really ours, right? It's his, and uh, <coughs> designed us and created us and brought us here for a purpose. And although we may think we're going where we're going to do what we do, we're having our lives transpire before us, right? And we're really just doing God's purpose, whether we know it or not. And so I thought about, well, Lord, what was even the purpose of me meeting John and John meeting me. And then God said, you know what, don't waste your time trying to figure it out. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit behind you. Yeah. I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. So for whatever that purpose was for the last 30 some odd years that I've known John, I have to assume that God has figured that that is done and it's time to move on to whatever we're moving on to the next. <laughs> And so in the final analysis, I thought about John. I said, you know what, I'm going to miss John, Lord. I really am. Because although I look all warm and cuddly, I'm really not friendly. And I've only got a few people that I'm really kind of cold messing with. You know, John was one of those few people. And let me open my heart to you. There were only a couple more people who I felt like I talked to. And then the last two and a half years, they've all gone to the Lord. So I was like, okay, John's going. Right? I'm kind of like, you know, riding solo now. I don't have no crew no more. I can rally up my little Christian gang and ride out and run up on these folks and deal with that demon the way we be dealt with. Right? And I can't rally up my boys no more. And I ain't scared, though. I ride by myself. You know? It really ain't no plan, but I just miss my crew, right? And then I got to thinking about the things I was going to miss about John, you know, the conversation, you know, and the, the, the love and, and the good feeling and all that good stuff. And I said, but you know what I'm going to miss most about John? That smile, man. That brother would break it down with that smile. And I used to love to talk to him because I would push his button. When I push his button, he'd smile and say, do that little laugh. Man. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you know, so I'm going to miss that about John. I have all the people who miss about John. I'm going to miss that. So if you knew John, you know what I'm talking about. So if you push that button, you got that smile, you got that go ahead. Right, you know, if you didn't know John, God bless you, you know. You missed the building. So I just want to say, that's why I didn't have anything to say, right? Is that you know what? Thank you for it. Well spent. Okay. So God bless each and every one of you all, and thank you for being here today. And thank you on behalf of John for giving you that laugh and tell you to come on now. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, he yeah, he get a rise on this. He really would. Okay. And so like I said, I thank the Lord, and I thank God for the friendship I share with John. <laughs>
He would also tell me about some of his life in China and how he somehow managed to learn to speak Mandarin so fluently. I did not see him too frequently back in those days, but I always cherished the quality time that we spent together. We became much closer after he moved to Detroit in the early 1980s. He joined the Michigan National Guard as a military policeman and was able to impart upon me a whole new set of survival skills. John always taught me the importance of using good common sense to avoid trouble and most importantly to avoid hanging around the wrong crowd. John was a big advocate of how uh, getting a good solid education would benefit me later in life and he was always telling me how the educational system that he and our brother Bobby experienced growing up in Cuba and China were so, so different than what most of the young people experienced here in the United States. 